out a sound. You come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests. Conceived out of nowhere, but in this place, beginning to lead everywhere. Requests to stop what you are doing right now and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a life. Questions that have patiently waited for you. Questions that have no right, no right to go away. When I was a child, I was given a book of Native American stories, an illustrated book, a beautifully illustrated book. I remember I mostly used to read it on the kitchen floor, one uh, knee up to my chest, and uh, I'd be seven or eight years old with my mother singing away quite often in the background. And um, those stories were from every part, part of what is now called North America. But they were, uh, they were uh, stories from out of these uh, local tribal and native traditions. And one of my very favorite stories was, uh, was an illustrated story of a young boy being taught how to cross a piece of broken ground in the forest. And standing above him was this very, very uh, dignified and uh, graceful elder man with a cloak around his shoulders who was obviously teaching this boy how to move through his local home, that forest, probably in the forests of the Northeast, uh, without making a sound. And uh, I was so taken by that story, as many of us have whenever we've come across the thought that you could actually enter territory without making a sound, without any announcement, without any fanfare, without even knowing yourself. Uh, I was so entranced by that uh, piece that uh, the image stayed with me right into my adulthood until finally sitting at my writing desk, uh, having dropped down into uh, a place where I wanted to remember things that I hadn't written down yet that had been crucial to my growing. Uh, I suddenly remembered this boy and the elder and the forest and the sense of silence and the sense of anticipation and invitation in that forest floor. Sometimes, sometimes, if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories who could cross a shimmering bed of leaves without a sound, sometimes if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories who could cross a shimmering bed of leaves without a sound, you come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests. Conceived out of nowhere, but in this place, in this place, beginning to lead everywhere. Requests to stop what you are doing right now and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a life. Questions that have patiently waited for you. Questions that have no right to go away. Of course, one of the great first steps in writing poetry is to stop the surface conversation you're having now, the peripheral conversation, the conversation where you're in competition, where you feel besieged, uh, where you feel fragmented, and drop down to a central image or tonality in the body or in your understanding that can hold a whole constellation of individual qualities together that circulate around you at the edge of your ordinary everyday life. And this is called the poetic imagination. I always say that the first step in deepening the conversation is to stop having the one you're having now. Not stopping from a puritanical point of view, uh, but stopping in order to drink from a deeper well. In order to come down onto ground which leads you into a new place. And the whole invitation in this, in this poem, in this image of the boy traveling over, over ground silently, is, is the invitation to the understanding that almost always you are tiptoeing into an epoch of your life that you don't fully understand. You think you understand it, 
but actually what is going to occur is unannounced. And the person you're going to become is unannounced. And you're actually going to cross the threshold without being able to name uh, or speak the stranger that you're going to become. And strange and, uh, and uh, beckoning life that calls you. I always think that uh, a life sincerely followed is always surprising and always leads you into places that you did not feel you could either enter or that you could deserve. And uh, part of the ability to hold the silence as we move and as, as we tiptoe or walk or take our pilgrim path from one epoch of our lives to another is the ability to not name things too early and to allow yourself to be surprised as to where you arrived. Sometimes, if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories, you could cross, could cross a shimmering bed of leaves without a sound. You come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests, conceived out of nowhere, but in this place, beginning to lead everywhere. Requests to stop what you are doing right now and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a life. Questions that have patiently waited for you. Questions that have no right, no right to go away. sometimes from river flow, new and selected poems. <laughs>